Hey friends, Miss Kay here. I'm back again to continue reading The Earth Dragon Awakes by Lawrence Yep. Today I'm going to be reading pages 40 through 50. 7 o'clock a.m. to 8.15 a.m. Wednesday, April 18th, 1906, Chinatown. Chen and his father sit on the rubble by the hole. Their home is now a huge garbage heap. Here is a shoe. There is a plate. Did anyone else get out? Chin asks. Aquan shrugs. Not that I know of. Dust rises in ribbons like tiny ghosts. Their neighbors are gone. The three of them are the only survivors from the building. Why are they the lucky ones? Why did the others die? Chinatown looks like a broken set of toy blocks. Some buildings tilt threateningly. Others are mounds of rubble like their home. A few blocks away, he can see St. Mary's Church. The crucifix has fallen from its steeple. Smoke rises from a nearby tenement. More smoke rises from warehouses in the east. Across the way, the small temple is crowded. Terrified people stand outside. They clasp their hands in prayer and bow their heads. They burn incense sticks and written prayers. The fragrance mixes with the dust and smoke in the air. Some even pray in the street. Shocked people wander around Chinatown. No one wants to be inside the old rickety buildings. A man hurries by with a half dozen empty bird cages. Another man pushes a baby carriage full of flower pots. A third carries a phonograph. He wears the funnel-shaped speaker on his head like a hat. The ground starts to shake again. People shout and scream. Within the temple, the praying grows even louder. This earthquake does not last long, but the earlier quakes have weakened many buildings already. A section of a building smashes into the street. It scatters cobblestones like missiles. One barely misses Chin. He worries about his friend. I hope Henry's all right. Let's look for a telephone, his father says. Bells clang. They draw closer by the second. Out of the way, a man shouts in English. A plume of steam rushes toward them. The crowd darts to either side. Suddenly, they can see the big horses pulling the fire engine. Their great hooves clop on the cobblestones. A fire captain shouts through the megaphone, Out of the way! He waves his hand anxiously. When the wagon slips on the stones, he nearly falls from his seat. The wagon halts by the burning building. Flames wag out of the windows like salamander tongues. The firemen leap from the wagon. They unwind the big hose. One of them stands with the hose's nozzle in his hands. He spreads his legs and waits. Another uses a big wrench to open the hydrant. Water spurts out and then stops. The water main must be broken, one of them shouts. He sounds both scared and frustrated. We'll try the next one, the captain says. First, it's falling buildings. Now, it's a fire. Aquan says, we'd better go to Portsmouth Square. It's an open space. It should be safe. Ah Sing and Chin get to their feet and join the crowd. The twisted cable car tracks look like the strokes of a mysterious, dreadful word. Piles of brick, wood, and stone lie everywhere. However, one store has already opened. The owner hastily changes the prices on his signs. He is tripling everything. A few steps ahead, a heavy sack thumps against the cobblestones. Hey, his father yells, jumping to the side with Chin. Sorry, a man calls from the second story of a store. We've got to get our stuff out. Sacks lie all around. Baskets break when they hit the street. Fruit spills onto the cobblestones. Things rain down on them from the upper stories. They have to keep dodging. Someone in a stationary store throws out a case. 
The lid comes open. Red gift envelopes scatter like bright leaves. In their hurry to save their possessions, people throw everything onto the street. Suitcases, pots, walks, chairs, clothes. The newspaper office is deserted. The printers have escaped. They have dropped trays of metal characters. They lie on the floor like glittering rice grains. They pass by an automobile. The heavy machine rests on its side like a sleeping animal. A little further on, a wagon has been turned upside down. The horse lies dead in its traces. A stone from a building fell on it. Chin and his father stop by the building that belongs to their clan. They ask to use the telephone, but the clerk shakes his head. All the telephone lines are down. We can't call Henry then, Chin worries. Does Henry's house still stand? Are the Travises even alive? We'll walk to their house when it's safe, his father promises. They pass by the firemen, who look exasperated as water trickles from the new hydrant. Ah Kwan, Ah Sing, and Chin hurry. None of them wants to be trapped in a burning Chinatown. They reach Portsmouth Square at last. The lawn stretches for an entire city block. This morning, though, Chin cannot see the grass. It is filled with people. There are many Americans as well as Chinese. People walk around in a daze. Others weep. Across the street to the east, police bustle in and out of the Hall of Justice. The mayor is there, too, because City Hall has been wrecked Seeing the mayor reassures Chin. Things are under control. Abruptly, he hears shouts. The crowd stirs like a flock of startled pigeons. People run by. A man almost knocks Chin over. His father grabs the rude man. What's the idea? The man points, terrified. There's a bull stampeding. He tears free and runs on. The bull's bellows draw near. What's a bull doing here? His father wonders. They bring cattle in from the boats to the slaughter yards, explains Aquan. The earthquake could have hit when they were bringing a herd in. It is already too late to escape. Run! A huge bull gallops toward them. Its eyes are wide with terror. Its sides glisten with sweat. Its hooves thud against the ground. It lowers its horns. They look wickedly sharp. Aquan unrolls his apron and takes out a knife. But the bull dodges and heads for Chin instead. His father darts in front of the bull. As he flaps his arms, he shouts, Run, boy! The bull knocks Ah Sing to the side. Father! Chin cries. The bull is right in front of him. Then there is a sharp crack. The bull jerks to a halt. A policeman stands there with a pistol. He takes aim and shoots again. The bull falls on its side. The policeman approaches the bull cautiously. It lies twitching. Then he eyes Aquan's knife suspiciously. Aquan drops the knife and holds his hands up. Butcher, he says quickly in English. I butcher. Then get cutting, the policeman says, holstering his pistol. We might as well have steaks. While Aquan sets to work, Chin goes over to his father. Are you all right? Chin asks him in Chinese. His father winces. It's my ankle. You saved me, Chin says. Chin was wrong about his father. He isn't dull at all. He should have his own book like Marshall Earp. But he also feels embarrassed. He was wrong to think his father wasn't a hero. As Ah Sing rests, people pile up the broken crates and furniture. They start fires in the square. They boil water from the broken main so it will be safe to drink. Soon, they are roasting steaks too. Several times the earth shivers, but the tremors never last long. Each time, people pause nervously. They check the buildings surrounding the square, but then they go back to cooking. Chin has never had so much beef in his life. As they eat breakfast, wagon loads of soldiers arrive. Things are going to be all right now, his father says confidently. 
The army is here. Chin watches the columns of smoke rising from the south and the east. Henry should be okay. His house is to the west. His father brushes the fuzz on the crown of Chin's head. You worry too much. 7 o'clock a.m. to 8.15 a.m. Wednesday, April 18, 1906. The Travis's Block, Sacramento Street area. Mr. Smith comes back with bad news from the fire station. They're too busy to come here. People are trapped everywhere, and there are fires all around. Then we'll have to do it ourselves, Mr. Travis says. He hands Mr. Smith a bucket. After another hour of firefighting, the neighbors tiredly plop on the ground. Henry's arms and back ache. The pails of water are heavy. Wet and sooty, Mr. Travis tells Henry and his mother to take a rest. Henry watches his father take a turn at the head of the line. He dashes inside the house with a heavy pail. Water ripples across the pool around the water main. The ground shakes again. Small waves wash around Henry. Water splashes out of Henry's bucket and over his shoes. Henry waits for it to end. It keeps going on and on. He falls on the slick cobblestones. He spills the bucket. His mother tries to catch him, but she loses her balance too. A wooden house is next to the burning one. It starts to shiver. Boards crack. Splinters fly into the air. The wooden house sags to the side. Glass windows shatter. Inside, furniture thumps against walls. The china plates crash. My house! A woman shrieks. She put her hands to her mouth. Frightened, Sawyer yips and pulls at the rope around his neck. Get out of there! Henry's mother shouts to his father. Mr. Travis appears in the doorway of the burning house. It is hard to run in the new earthquake. A tongue of fire dances on his shoulder. The next instant, the wooden house cracks off its foundation. It slides sideways. It smashes into the burning house. Both collapse. Henry's yell is lost in the roar. 8.15 a.m. Wednesday, April 18, 1906, San Francisco. After a big earthquake, the ground can still shake. It is called an aftershock. The earthquake has weakened many buildings. Aftershocks cause these structures to collapse too. Even more people become buried in wrecked houses. The firemen try to rescue the trapped people, but they also have to put out many fires. 52 fires have been reported. There are probably even more that they have not heard about. The firemen face many hardships. They have lost their own chief. The earthquake toppled a chimney on him. Others have taken charge. Some fire companies have also lost their horses. Scared by the earthquake, the animals bolted from the firehouses. So the firemen pull their wagons by hand, but they cannot travel as fast or as far. They also don't have enough water. The big water mains have broken in 300 places. Pipes branch from the water mains into the buildings. There are more than 23,000 breaks in those pipes. Most hydrants are empty, but the firemen do not give up. They find the hydrants that work. They hook up hoses from one wagon to another so they can pump water from several blocks away to a fire. Or they pump salt water from the bay. But more and more fires flicker into life in the ruins. The flames feed upon broken boards or hissing gas pipes. Soon, they swell large enough to swallow entire houses. They are like a pack of wolves attacking where no one expects them to. Then, one fireman remembers an old source of water. Many years ago, water was stored in 57 stone-covered pits called cisterns. Then the city installed water pipes and covered up the old cisterns. Now the firemen break into them.